Hey folks, I'm Mike and today I want to talk with you about just how many drones do you need? One of the questions I've been asking myself recently as I contemplate a new build is how many drones do I need? And the famous answer for that is just one more. Just one more drone and I'll be good. Just one more, it's cool. For me, I have kept around two drones flying at any given time. Uh, sometimes it's one, sometimes it's two. I have the one that I prefer, which I've completely jacked up. Um, you can see right here that uh, concrete and the hype train motors do not mix. And that is unfortunate. This is more than one time that this has happened. Uh, so this drone is out of commission until I either get new bells or completely replace all the motors. And anyways, this is not a bash session. Um, but I recently went flying and I took out my primary drone, which is the one you just saw. And I also took out my secondary drone, uh, which is this one right here. And you can see that I had a prop strike on the X-T60. Now this one's wholly my fault. This is, uh, this is bad build quality. Um, this, this power lead should not be this long. At any rate, I have always kept about two drones in the air at any given time. There have been times when I've had three and there's times when I've only had one. But for the most part, for me, the answer has been two. There are three questions that you need to ask yourself when it comes to answering the question of how many drones do you need? Number one, how are you flying? Number two, where are you flying? And number three, what are you flying? So let's kick it off with number one. How are you flying? I am not an aggressive pilot. I like big sweeping arcs in fields for the most part, um, but I'm not one that tends to push it. I typically go out by myself. I'm not a racer and so I can often get away with just one drone because in ideal circumstances, when I go out somewhere, I come back with a working drone. I keep that second drone as kind of backup just in case I want to fly. But if you're a super aggressive flyer, if you're always pushing the limits, if you're a racer that is, you know, constantly, constantly pushing and flying and flying and flying, the answer is different. You need three, four, five. I've seen some racers that go out with 10 drones. Um, how you fly is a big question that should help you answer how many drones you need. If you're super aggressive, you're gonna need more drones because quite frankly, you're gonna be breaking things more often. And the whole purpose of having multiple drones is A, <clears throat> to give you the ability to fly longer in a session and B that if you do break one and a good day comes up the next day, you can still fly. So how you're flying is the first question that you really need to consider. The second question that you really need to consider is where are you flying? I fly as it happens in trees, in woods, in fields, in parks, stuff with soft ground, right? And so if I do go down, a lot of times I just dig a bunch of dirt out of the motors and then I put the drone back up. There's really not a lot of damage. I might bend a prop, change a prop, not a big deal. 
What I've noticed though is that when I go to places that are primarily concrete, the damage is just way worse. Um, when I went out this past, it wasn't this Sunday, it was a Sunday before, uh, you know, I went to a place with buildings, there's lots of concrete, I was gonna do some dives, and quite frankly, I did what amounted to $75 worth of damage in approximately 15 minutes. Um, number one, I'm, I'm not used to flying concrete as much as I'm used to flying fields. Uh, but number two, you know, you hit the concrete and it's just, it's brutal. It is hard on your drone. Um, concrete by its very nature is hard. And even though we fly these parts that are metal and carbon fiber and there's still things that just go wrong. Um, like I said, uh, I've I've torn up these hype trains in this exact same spot multiple times and it's really just it's brutal when you're in a hard environment. So that's the second thing that you need to consider. Where are you flying? <laughs> takes us to our third question, what are you flying? And specifically, what is the reliability of the things that you are flying? Let me give you two examples here. Uh, as you can see, I have the hype train motors on, these are the original V1 hype train motors, and I have them on my primary quad. They do not do well with bottom impacts. Uh, the bell is very delicate and it just you can see the damage right here uh the reliability of these motors is not high at all um, in a concrete environment now maybe people have different experiences with them than i do but for me this is the second or third time that i've run into this situation where the bell separates from the it's a two-piece bell it separates and then it stops spinning um, but also, antennas have been like, by God, one of the worst freaking things that I've had to deal with. And I have started uh, realizing that I need the Axi stubby antennas are the ones that I prefer. Now, I did, in fact, tear one up uh, in this recent concrete session, which was just super fantastic. Um, but uh, I've gone through a lot of antennas and I've realized that at least for my flying style where I'm doing acrobatics and I can end up on the tail of my craft very frequently, I need an antenna that's not going to get caught in the props because typically my antennas get taken out by my props. So what you are flying is very important because if you fly something with high durability, you're not going to need as many drones. Now, obviously, nothing is indestructible. And you should consider that when you're buying it. But, you know, if you were to come to me right now and tell me, hey, dude, I'm going to be doing a lot of building and bando flying, I'm probably going to tell you, don't get the hype trains. Um, interestingly enough, I've also heard that the Mr. Steel motors, this is the V1 that I've got right here, uh, are also delicate. Uh, I have not had a chance to, I, I really haven't broken any of them. Um, but also this is my backup quad and one that I haven't flown as much over the past year or so. Uh, they may be just as delicate, I don't know. <laughs> To wrap things up, how you are flying, whether you're aggressive or taking it easy, is important. If you're aggressive, then you need more quads. Where you are flying is also important. If you are flying in fields, you probably don't need as many quads. Um, if you're flying in concrete jungles, you're probably going to need more quads. And the reliability, what you are flying, really impacts the number of quads that you need. If you find an indestructible motor, 
please let me know because even if it's not the most power efficient, I would probably switch to it. So there you have it, how you're flying, where you're flying, and what you're flying should help you answer how many quads you need. I still have a feeling that for most of us, the answer is just one more. And it'll always be just one more, but that's a an entirely different topic. Anyways, my name's Mike. I hope you've enjoyed this. Like, subscribe, comment, do all that good stuff, and uh, I'll talk to you later. Bye. <clears throat>